what prompted this uh, study to be conducted? So um, testosterone, a lot of infertile men have decreased testosterone. And some of the options to treat low testosterone in men uh, suffering from infertility are medications and they're off-label medications such as clomiphene citrate and anastrozole. Both these medications are either estrogen blockers or estrogen receptor antagonists and they decrease the estrogen receptor action and increase intratesticular testosterone thereby maintaining fertility. Unfortunately, both these medications have side effects. Long term, they can lead to decreased libido, uh, decrease in uh, bone health, and decrease in sexual function. And so we wanted to see if there are other testosterone therapy medications that would actually not only improve their testosterone levels, but would also maintain fertility. Please describe the, the findings of the study, including any that came as a surprise to you and your uh, co-authors. So one of the hallmarks of exogenous testosterone therapy is that it negatively feeds back on the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, thereby blocking GnRH or the gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, thereby blocking the production of gonadotropins, which are FSH and LH. FSH is follicle stimulating hormone and LH is luteinizing hormone. And because both these hormones are abrogated completely in men taking exogenous testosterone therapy, intratesticular testosterone is decreased and therefore spermatogenesis declines. And in majority of cases, men end up with azoospermia or not having any sperm count. One of the trials that was previously done prior to the medication called Nitesto or nasal testosterone gel, their FSH and LH levels in men taking Nitesto appeared not to be abrogated completely. They were decreased, but they didn't completely decline to zero or undetectable levels. So this prompted us to go back and evaluate whether maintaining gonadotropins, i.e. FSH and LH, would also maintain sperm parameters in these patients. So we went and took men with normal sperm counts, but low testosterone levels, less than 300 on two separate occasions, and we gave them nasal testosterone gel for a total of six months. And this was a single center open label trial where we, uh, where we recruited a total of 40 men. And we found out that 95% of men were able to maintain their sperm counts at the end of three and six months. It did decline a little bit and long-term we're trying to follow up on those studies, but it was still well within the normal range. And only 5% of men either had oligospermia with a low sperm count or zero sperm count. And all of this 5% of men after stopping the medication recovered within the next three months to their baseline sperm counts. So we were pretty surprised because traditional teaching and thought process is that exogenous testosterone therapy cannot be used in men attempting conception. But here we are demonstrating with this clinical trial showing that short acting nasal testosterone gel is able to preserve spermatogenesis in 95% of the men. Okay. Uh, do you and your group plan to conduct future research on Natesto? And if so, um, what will the focus be? Sure. We have actually started recruiting for a uh, trial looking at Natesto versus testosterone cipionate. From our original study, where we showed that it was able to maintain spermatogenesis, now we're trying to see if Natesto also has a decreased incidence or prevalence of side effects. One of the biggest side effects that happens with testosterone therapy is called polycythemia, or increase in hematocrit. And we are trying to see if short-acting testosterone therapy with nasal testosterone gel or Natesto will have a decreased prevalence of polycythemia compared to long-acting testosterone therapy with testosterone cipionate injections. So we're conducting a one-to-one -one, uh, randomized trial uh, comparing Natesto versus testosterone cipionate with a four-month follow-up with a primary endpoint of evaluating hematocrit, with the hypothesis being testosterone cipionate will cause increases in hematocrit a lot more than short-acting Natesto. What should practicing urologists take away from the study findings? So I think practicing urologists need to know 
that in men who have normal sperm counts and they have low testosterone and who are not desiring fertility right away and who just want to preserve their fertility for their future, I think should be comfortably placed on nasal testosterone gel. You should follow their sperm counts and obviously stop the medication if it goes down, but certainly can be comfortably placed on nasal testosterone gel. The message is very important, is that nasal testosterone gel or Nitesto should not be used to increase sperm counts. I don't think that's the purpose. So I think clomiphenicitrate and nestrozole should still be used off-label to try and improve sperm counts. But nasal testosterone gel can be used to maintain sperm counts. So in men with normal sperm counts and low testosterone levels, and they want to preserve fertility, uh, Nitesto should be a safe option. Is there anything else that you feel our audience should know about Nitesto and or uh, the current study? So one of the biggest side effects that happens with Nitesto is uh, allergies and rhinitis. And, and, and in patients who have a history of rhinitis or allergies or sinusitis, I think they should be warned that most likely they won't be able to tolerate the drug. A lot of the dropouts that happened on the trial uh, happened because of either new onset allergies or patients who developed uh, with a history of allergies who couldn't tolerate the drug, despite the fact that they were happy on it, uh, just the side effect alone that, that they couldn't tolerate it. So uh, I think men who are being prescribed this should be of that potential side effect, but also should be asked about the history of that because none of the other testosterone therapies either have that side effect or uh, should be worried about giving that in patients who have a history of rhinitis or sinusitis.